I probably should have just started my dissections on the dining room table so that it could be like dissections in the dining room with your creepy lab assistant. Alas, I did not, but this is the dining room that now has a digestive system on it so that when we're eating, we can all think about the poop shoot, as people around here like to call it, my little assistant in particular. Anyway, off to the kitchen to dissect an eyeball. I kind of feel bad that you don't get to dissect an eyeball from your kitchen. The eyeball dissection is the coolest dissection of both semesters? Maybe both semesters. Definitely of this semester. So, I don't know. If you ever get the chance to cut open an eyeball, take it. Um, you know, like, I don't know. Where would they have extra eyeballs? I don't know. Like, if you know some somebody who's a hunter and they shoot a deer, ask them to keep the eyeballs for you. Or order a lab kit and teach yourself a uh, lab at home so you can get everything that you missed uh, for not having lab kits available now. That's a great idea. All right, here we go. We're digging in. Hey, okay, people. It's hard to manage a computer and a dissection at the same time. So I'm looking at everything you need to know right now. But if I don't hit it all while I'm doing the dissection, you can look at it on Mastering AMP. So if you recall, we said that adipose tissue can be found protecting some organs like the eye and the kidney. There's a whole bunch of adipose tissue that I'm going to have to remove before we can really get into this eyeball dissection. I'm not going to worry about all the adipose tissue surrounding this eyeball because uh, it's too cold and wet. So maybe when we get to looking for the optic nerve it will have warmed up some and it'll be easier to get off. So we're just going to dig right into the dissection. And so I'm going to start by making a coronal plane through the eyeball about right here. If I can separate it there, then I should be able to pour the vitreous humor out into my um, hand. And so what we can see here is that oh, I'm going to begin by trying to make a section here just right about even, maybe, I do not have a sharp scalpel, I do not have sharp scissors, Arrgh. oh the joys of dissecting in your kitchen, heck I should just at this point grab a knife, I can't, my roommate just got home, I'd be busted. See, in class, you would be doing all of this, and I would just be sitting back and watching. And saying, I've earned my stripes, I've done this before, okay. I may have made a cut. There we go, all right. So, coronal section. Trying to get right between the anterior and posterior segments is the best cut to try and make. I think I blew it, but if you can get there. Well, it's okay. Okay, so look what we can see in here. This is my posterior segment that's full of vitreous humor, and that is the lens that I'm going to be able to pop out. And so, oh, it's gonna, I can hear it, like all the membrane rupturing. Here comes my lens. So, oh, come on. I want to show you how thick vitreous humor is. Oh, here comes the lens too. But can you see this? No. I wish this was not my kitchen. Okay. So we could be a close or if I had an actual cameraman, that would be helpful. This is the lens. So that is being held by the ciliary zonules and that ciliary body. 
And that's like the border between the anterior and posterior segment. So here's vitreous humor that fills the posterior segment. And as you can see, it's so thick and gelatinous, it actually is like a solid fluid that you can hold. And in a little bit, that's gonna like rupture and become the fluid fluid that is fluid. Uh, but yeah, vitreous humor is pretty awesome. So what are some things that we can see here? Let me finish making this cut and we'll look at the layers from all the angles. So here we have the outer fibrous layer that has the sclera and the cornea. So the iris is actually back here. You can't see it. So I'm going to remove this tissue. So if you look back here on the posterior aspect, can you see this? Yeah. So that hole is what do you think? It's the pupil. So in front of that, that uh, this tissue that I'm touching on the interior, but back towards me <laughs> is the cornea. And so right here, this is the ciliary body and the ciliary zonules. You can see they're textured and right in front of that is the iris. So let me finish making this cut. Pretty good cut until right then. Okay, that's actually pretty awesome. So, okay. So if you were to walk up to a lab practical station in your living room and the pointer was here, and said, "What is its structure?" You would say, "This is the cornea." If it said something like, "What is this structure?" You would say, "It is the iris." I could say it controls what. The pupil. Okay, here's the ciliary zonules right here that are part of the ciliary body, body that holds on to the lens and changes the shape of the lens based on whether you're focusing on something close or far away. So if you're focusing on something close, what does it do? It bulges. If you're focusing on something far away, what does it do? It flattens. I wish you could feel this because I'm squeezing it. And I'm like, how does this bulge or flatten at all? It's so solid. How can you even see anything through it? Well, this is a dead lens. But anyway, what else? Yeah, see, my computer just went to sleep. So we were supposed to see our three layers. Our outer fibrous layer has the sclera and the cornea. So did you see that? Sclera. It's hard to see all of it. Here, there you go. There's the white of your eye and sclera and cornea. Is this conjunctiva? I have to stop getting distracted. We need to just get through this. Um, okay, vascular layer has uh, the choroid on the posterior aspect and the ciliary body on the anterior aspect. Right now what we're looking at is the inner layer. And so this is actually the retina the retina has two parts, the pigmented layer and the neural layer. The neural layer has all of our rods and cones. So what's so cool, right now what you're looking at is all of these axons of those ganglion cells that are sweeping information back here into the optic nerve. Can you see that? Probably not, but watch, I'm going to sweep them away. Oh, back there's the choroid. And look how, oh, look at that. Can you see that? Maybe if you're a better holder of the eyeball, a little assistant. So see how I'm like sweeping this yellow stuff away? Those are, that's the neural layer, the retina. And if you recall, we said there were two layers to the retina, the pigmented layer, which is very thin, and then the um, neural layer that has our rods and cones that are talking to our bipolar cells that are talking to our ganglion cells and the ganglion cells are shooting their axons back in what's becoming the uh, uh, optic nerve. Those are all of the axons coming together and shooting out right here at the optic disc. So let's see if I can kind of like pull that in a way that makes it meaningful, you, meaningful for you to see. See they're all shooting. Ah! 
They're all shooting back there. Neurons are super fragile. That's the other thing that you would be able to feel if we were in class. They're all sweeping back there and shooting out into the optic nerve. So that was the one reason I thought about trying to get more of this adipose tissue off. Although as it's warming up, now I can see it. Here's my optic nerve coming out back here. So did you see that? Like we swept away all our axons of those neurons and they're coming back in the optic nerve. Come on, focus. You can do it right there. Okay. So the other thing that we see is the pigmented layer. And then I can pull this off and see my choroid, the vascular layer has uh, the ciliary body in the front. Oh, sorry. So I can pull that off. So pull back my neurons um, and see my choroid. So I've got my neural layer, my pigmented layer of the retina, and then I've got my vascular layer that has the choroid and the posterior aspect. And choroid, we said, meant black. And then it contains the blood vessels, which you can kind of see in there, that serve the eye. And the uh, anterior aspect of the vascular layer has the ciliary body. Again, with our ciliary muscles that contract uh, and relax to uh, relax or constrict these suspensory ligaments here that change the shape of the lens. The lens then reflects all that light or sorry is going to take that light and project it onto the retina. It flips on upside down and backwards and then shoots out through your optic nerve to be processed. Okay, so okay, what else do we need to see? Um, that's the inner layer, here's the vascular layer, here's the fibrous layer. <sighs> Do we need to see anything else? I don't think so. Um, yeah, I don't know. As I said, if there's anything else on the lab, it's just not coming to my mind right now. I don't know. Yeah, I think we're just done with dissection in the dining room, even though it's not the dining room. See you next time. Ooh, that's a good one. See you. Soon. Okay, people, you're just gonna have to work with me. I have yet to get my camera stabilizing onto the microscope device, as was very cleverly recommended by one of you. So here we're going anyway. Um, this is your eye, and this is where the vitreous humor would be. So this is the inner layer. When I was doing the cow eyeball dissection, I told you we swept away the retina with our neural layer and our pigmented layer. You can't see the pigmented layer in the cow eyeball because this is it and it's really thin. So what you can see in the cow eyeball was the choroid that was black and there was blue on it. That blue that you see is in animals that have night vision. It's called the tapetum lucidum. So that was what I forgot to mention in the kitchen. So I wish I could zoom in more with this camera to show you exactly what's going on. But here we have the, like, this is where, there are these supporting cells and stuff here, but this is where all of our axons from our ganglion cells would be coming out and going back to form the optic nerve and so here you can see like the nuclei in the somas of the ganglion cells. And then the bipolar cells are here and they're talking to the rods and cones here. And that's the neural layer of the retina. This is the pigmented layer of the retina. Okay. The vascular layer is right here and it contains the blood vessels that serve the eye, hence the name vascular, and it has choroid, black, this pigmented layer, there are a lot of melanocytes in here, I'm making it black so that we can absorb all the photons of light so that they don't scatter. Okay, then that means that the outermost layer is here, come on, this is the sclera, it is, oi, dense connective tissue. Oh, look at there, beautiful. And you can see, 
got these tightly packed collagen fibers squashing together to form the sclera. So that forms the like white of your eye. So yeah, that actually worked pretty well. So next on to cochlea. Well, whoever picked out the slide for the cochlea should be fired because it's horrible. I've been sitting here for the last mm, 10 or 15 minutes trying to get something that's visible, but it's not stained very well. So look at Mastering AMP at their amazing like pictures that they have with really great microscopes that they're not using in their living room and study from that. See you later.